All right, everybody, here is like day three or four in Kyoto. You're doing one of those popular things to do in the area, which is visit the Fushimi Inari Taisha, or Fushimi Inari Shrine. Super iconic, super beautiful. It could be a fun adventure, and we're gonna take you along the way, show hopefully some place off the beaten path, and get down to business and explore. After arriving at Inari Station, we made our way to the street leading up to Fushimi Inari Shrine. The street was relatively quiet because we showed up pretty early in the morning, for us at least, but it had lots of energy and felt really festive. There were lots of Tori gates, the red ones on display, which we would see more of later as we entered Fushimi Inari Taisha, which is the actual Shinto Shrine itself. Now, believe it or not, this is not the main focal point, but it's definitely worth looking around a little bit, taking in the nice grounds of the shrine, the beautiful red buildings, and the fox statues, which are going to allude to something we're going to see a lot more of later. Once you explore and take some time to just look around the main shrine grounds, make your way a bit further back, following the gates and the stairs where you will enter, in my opinion, the real Fushimi Inari. Look at all these beautiful gates, everybody. And as you can see, there's writing along the sides. The writing signifies people that donated money to the shrine. The bigger the gate with your name on it, that means the more money you donated to this actual cause. So it's really cool to know that you can, if you want, you could donate your own money. Maybe they'll give you a tiny little shrine. I don't know if they accept $5 donations, but uh, I'm really think about spending an arm and leg on this one. So undoubtedly one of my favorite things about Fushimi Inari isn't the shrine itself. Obviously I love the orange Tory gates, but some of those areas get a little built up. My favorite thing about it is it turns into like a choose your own adventure. And we just went like 150 meters off the main path and we just passed this beautiful little shrine that there's like nobody at where some main areas are really busy. And then we're surrounded in a really beautiful bamboo forest where we can hear birds chirping. <laughs> if you don't have time to go to the bamboo grove in Arashiyama, just come here. You have it almost all to yourself. Is it quite as picturesque? No, but it's still lovely. And it's great because you have the whole place to yourself and you can walk along this little path with little shrines along the way, no people, beautiful sounds of nature, the wind rustling. It's so magical, guys. And you can add this in combination to the shrine experience and the beautiful orange Tory gates that you can walk through that of course it's famous for. How amazing is this? but can I just plead with you tourists that are like myself allowed to come back to Japan now? Don't be this person. Don't engrave your initials into the beautiful bamboo. It ruins it, you could potentially kill the things. And it's really tacky and not really respectful to the local people that live here. And yeah, just be a responsible and courteous tourist. Don't be that person, please. There are countless little gems along the way, such as the Tama Hime Sha, small Shinto shrine, right nearby the main path. You just gotta wander a little bit off the way. And there's even this really long one. Good luck saying it. I'm not gonna butcher it in front of you, but you can visit it for free. There are not only big red vermilion Tori gates on display, you can find the little ones, such as in this little tiny shrine tucked away off the main path of Hashimi Inari, where you see these little tiny red Tori gates and little fox statues littered around, decorating, giving this place beautiful ambience. Oh, heating up. Have to go uphill to climb the mountain. It's worth it though, for the views up ahead.
At the Shin Ike Pond, you can experience a combination of the religion and spirituality with nature, which is one of my favorite things about Fushimi Inari, is how it effortlessly infuses the Shinto shrine spiritual feel with nature, which Shintoism is all about the little gods and spirits that exist in natural things around us. So if you're up for an adventure and getting some nice views and continuing to spend as much time here as possible, you can actually climb to the top of a mountain called Mount Inari, which is about Fushimi Inari Shrine because it's built leading up to Mount Inari. And there's so many stories of these story gates, <sighs> but it's getting a little hot and it's definitely a bit of a hike mixed into the sightseeing, which is really fun for me. After a lot of effort climbing through thousands of Tori gates, we are finally reaching the ultimate viewpoint at the top of Fushimi Inari's Mount Inari. Another pro is these shrines provide a bit of shade in addition to the forest. So 60, 70 degree day is perfect. But uh, yeah, expect to get overheated if you're not careful, especially in the summer, stay hydrated. And there's lots of little vending machines to give you beverages along the way. Looks like he's drooling. The only thing is this place can be a bit overwhelming with the decisions you have to make. Earlier we were at triple crossroads, but when in doubt, just stick to the right. You can also use Google Maps to try and get an idea of the walking paths. Sometimes they're listed, and there's also some maps, which sometimes are helpful, sometimes not as much, but hey, either way, you're having a good time, right? This is super pretty too. We of course had to make our way back down the mountain, heading down a different route, making a bit of a circle, of course experiencing and exploring many more hidden little areas with plenty of red gates tucked away in the beautiful forests of Kyoto. Alright everybody, so we're pretty much done with Fushimi Inari. We decided to take a side path going down the mountain, away from the main hustle of things near the sort of Yotsuji, I think, area. And there's a really nice observation point, which we just saw, which is really cool. And now we're gonna just take a little area down the side of the mountain, hopefully see some place off the beaten path. It's about an hour walk to Airbnb, so we're debating about walking it, but we can also take a train back if we would like. But still really cool and beautiful weather, perfect time to adventure. Like the true adventurers we are, we left the proper path of Fushimi Inari to find our own way back home because Kyoto is big, but it's not that big. Thanks for watching everybody. I hope this was helpful and inspired you to maybe check out the Fushimi Inari Taisha and some other hidden gems. Make sure to follow for more Japan content. Peace.